Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT version 12. Remember, we're in version 12 running this. And we're going to look at a module today. We're going to be looking at one we've not looked at before called World Explorer. It's right at the very bottom of my list here. Uh, now, I don't need any of these other modules installed to do this. Um, it's just because I'm in my testing world, that's where I've got other bits installed. So World Explorer stands all on its own. Lovely jubbly, nice and easy. And it's one of those ones that actually doesn't have any configuration settings. It's really simple, um, but really effective. So I have slapped in a new scene here for my map of Barovia, just because it's a very convenient large map. Uh, and I've got Sorryman on here, if I have my token active, uh, to represent the, the party who obviously will move throughout this map as part of their campaign. Now, at the moment, if I pull over the player view, here is Sorryman's view, uh, he can see everything. He can see the whole map. We don't want that. So obviously we can use Fog of War. So we could use Fog of War on here um, and we could do it that way. But this mod allows us to do something different so if i go to my scene and i right click and go to configure i now have this new tab called world explorer okay so you've got all your normal stuff your basic what your actual map is the grid etc but world explorer allows you to pick an overlay image uh, that will sit over the map and effectively act like that fog of war uh, and as they explore, that will be revealed. So this is really good for, weirdly enough, world exploration. Um, you wouldn't want to use it in dungeons and stuff, but where you've got a big overland map, you don't want to reveal the whole map until they've got there. So these are the only options we've got in here. What that image is that we want to use, whether it's enabled on this particular scene, I'm going to click yes. Um, do we want to keep the area uh, explored by tokens and keep it as explored? We have some options here about the overlay, about whether we want to only hide the map, whether we want to hide tiles um, that aren't overhead. Do we want to hide drawings and everything? So I'd probably go with cover everything except the grid so they can see nothing. I don't really want them seeing place names and stuff, even if it's in darkness and going, oh, look, there's a village over there. Let's go. That's not how I would want to do it. So let's save, uh, well, quickly first, we have an overlay opacity that is separate for the game master and for the player. It's going to turn mine down slightly because I'm going to show you the player view. Um, and I suspect you'd always want that on one, but there might be reasons you don't. So let's save changes. And here we go. Here is my overlay. And you can just see that. But I can, as the DM, I can still see most of the map, but it's nice and clear where the players have explored. And you can see that Sorryman and his party have already done a little bit of exploring. Uh, let's switch over to the player view because that's much more useful. This is what the players can see. So, yeah, I've chosen a giant picture of Strahd to cover my map. And if we look in the bottom, because this is a nice big map as well. If we look in the bottom right-hand corner here, here we've got Sorryman and their party. Uh, and they can only see stuff that they have revealed so far. Uh, as he says that and it doesn't work. Why does that suddenly stop working? Is it because? Is it because? Keep areas explored. There's always a little glitch or something. Let me bring Sorryman back over. Here we go. So there we go. Remember, I make mistakes so you don't have to. Uh, and as we head off there, it will show you the areas that they've explored. Now, Sorryman's token is a square one. It's covering up most of what he can see there. But as we explore, it's... Re it's just being a bit slow. That's interesting. When I was testing it, it wasn't doing that. It's just a little bit slow. And it might be because this is a huge map with a huge image on it. Okay, so... But it works absolutely beautifully. It's just a little bit slow, and I, like I say, I suspect it's because of the huge image I'm using. Yeah, it is working fine. Uh, smaller map, or not so detailed, and it might be the fact that I've got this huge, great big Strahd image stretched across everything. So, you know, zooming out, I've got this great big chap here. Uh, one thing, if I drag my token, it reveals the one he's on, but not the ones he's crossed. Um, remember, I'm in the player view here, so it's only using the uh, the arrow keys here just to move myself along, but it's going to reveal that. Let's play with a couple of those other settings, shall we? 
and see how that works. And we can see the DM map, of course, replicating where has been revealed. So there's the DM, we know what's been seen. Now it says about this token reveal distance and this grid tile extended reveal. Let's put this up to two and let's see what that does and you probably saw that jump immediately there. Let's go back to the player view here. We're going to go north this time. So as we move north, I'm expecting it's revealing a wider area around where we are. Okay, so two is probably not high enough for what we, you know, for practical applications. But you can just play with this. I'm going to put that down to zero and I'm going to put this one up to five and just see what the difference is between these two. So let's bring Soriman back over. Um, ah, so they can see that far, but it's not necessarily explored. So if we see, we can see this tile right here where my mouse is. If I move down, it doesn't stay as being explored because they didn't actually go into it. So one of them is the how much do they reveal as explored and stays revealed and how much of it is they could just see while they're there. So that's the difference between those two options. So again, nicely, you can configure that however is going to work for you. You could do something like 5 and 10. Bring Soriman back over here. Uh, and as we head off towards Strahd's ear roll, we can see that we can see quite far there. And it's going to leave us a wider explored. Oh, look, there's the castle. We can head towards the castle now that we can see it. Um, it's nice, isn't it? I'm not 100% sure that I would use this um, because a lot of my campaigns don't have lots of overland travel. Curse of Strahd does, though. So this might be something that I do choose to use as opposed to using Fog of War. Um, it's, just, it's a nice, simple little mod that just gives you this beautiful overland travel ability for them to for players to explore and of course i'm in i'm in Soriman at the moment so the players can explore themselves and head where they like obviously you know with the dm controlling some speed on that <laughs> if you tell them you know oh you can move five tiles today or whatever it might be uh, then they can choose where they're going to move and of course they can stop and go oh hang on a minute yeah let's camp on the shore of the lake or oh we found a road let's follow the road and see where that takes us um, you know, oh look, it's brought us to this village over here, right on Strahd's forehead. Uh, so yeah, nice one, nice simple, nice and easy, quick to install, very few options for you to get it wrong. Um, obviously I managed to get it slightly wrong. <laughs> easy to fix though, eh? Um, yeah, uh, somebody in the comments actually pointed me at this one. Apologies, forgotten who it was. Um, is there anybody else using this or want to use this? Think it's good? Remember, I am in version 12. It seems to be working absolutely fine. I've got a slight uh, slight gap in my map here for whatever reason. Um, but obviously, the DM can just patch that if they need to. It's quite easy to do. You could even have a... Um, <clears throat> just hang on a second. I've just had a thought, something that might be useful to some of you. The DM could even decide to have a player character that they control when they want to go, well, actually, uh, let's pick somewhere. Uh, the, the mountains, let's pick that. And they might say, actually, I'm going to drop this down here um, and I, because I want... It's not a player character. <laughs> uh, let's quickly create an actor. Very quickly, player character. Um, let's call him Pop. Thank you, Pop. And now what we should be able to do, hopefully, is so I could do that. And I could just pop, pop, pop anywhere I wanted to, again, back to Soriman's view, highlight particular areas. So I can manually reveal bits. You know, oh, these are really high mountains. You can see these from a long way off. You might choose to go, actually, I'm going to reveal those mountains to my players and just walk my character around the bits that they can see. Before, after the game, during the game, players are having an argument, doing some RP, whatever it might be. Uh, you can do that. Um, and then, yes, they can see that those mountains are there. And they might kind of go, oh, yeah, let's head off towards the mountains. Let's, uh, they're going to follow the road um, through the village to do that, whatever takes their fancy, if I can use my mm -hmm. WASD keys properly. Uh, but there we go. Yeah, nice one. Um, yeah, let me know if you think it's useful. Uh, obviously, as always, please do like. Uh, leave a comment, and if you're not subscribed, please do so. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.